Of late, I've been thinking about stories. Humans learn from stories throughout the ages. This is how we have conveyed knowledge. What is our story? What is your story? Are you a hero? Are you a victim? What does it mean to undertake a hero's journey? What does that mean? And what are the stories that we're telling ourselves now about reality? When something happens to you, the neuroscientists tell us, and you don't understand it, you make up a story about it. And of course, there are people in business, in, in government, in various ideologies who know this very well. And so they're very good at making up your story. And we, we're getting this all the time. Oh, we're threatened. Be, be afraid, be, be very afraid. Who are our enemies? I've spent time in Afghanistan where Shinor works and where one of our students, uh, Louisa Wamsley, is now going to, has been and is going back to work with Shinor. And this is not my experience of Afghanistan. My experience is of the most gallant and wonderful and courageous people anywhere in the world. People who are building a whole new way of being together as a people. That's not the story you hear in the daily news. I've been a victim. I built an organization. We built it from two of us to the, one of the biggest environmental organizations in the country. And I got fired. That came as a bit of a shock to me. So what do you do when you're a victim? You can, <laughs> or you can begin again. And this is the entrepreneur's great gift. This is why Donna became an entrepreneur, recognized that she was an entrepreneur. Because so much of our movement is about being a victim. About we're losing, we're gonna, go, we're gonna fight the noble fight, but we're losing, we're gonna go down. And so with a, with a team of young people, we built natural capitalism solutions and I'm living my dream. And last week, I stood in front of an audience of utility executives and they put up this slide. Pacific Gas and Electric, a business case for sustainability. We're winning. That's not the story that we tell ourselves much of the time, yeah? But we're winning. The companies are coming around. Is it fast enough? Hell, no. <laughs> Global Biodiversity Outlook 3, the science from Dr. Tom Lovejoy at the Smithsonian. You know, Donna said, I'm not going to bore you with the bad stuff. Well, it's bad. Um, <clears throat> business as usual, there will be no living coral reefs on planet Earth by perhaps the middle of this century. Sorry, scuba divers. The Amazon, the Amazon is dying. And perhaps the most serious, the oceans are acidifying. Now, um, why do you care? Well, those of you who live around here and like oysters, this is now a serious problem for the oyster industry. The sound out here is one of the most acid oceans in the world. It also is, of course, affecting those little phytoplankton, the little calciferous critters that <laughs> produce oxygen. And if you're sentimental about breathing, um, you might want to be concerned. Why is this happening? Climate change. And climate change has its victims. The people in the Ninth Ward in Katrina, it, was it a surprise, was it an accident that the people worst hurt by Katrina were the poor people, the people of color? No, they are the ones who will be hurt worst. Pakistan, the floods a couple years ago, 20 million people displaced. Or the people in the north of Africa, 
This is 100,000 people in the Dadaab refugee camp, where there are now something like 18 million people at risk of starvation because of choices we make every day in our lives to behave in ways that emit carbon. So what is the story going to be of this age? Are we going to be the victim? This, is, this was a poster in the Copenhagen airport, December 2009, when the world came together to put in place an international treaty to control climate change, and we failed. This president who just last week spoke finally, finally about climate change, is this going to be our story? God, I hope not. Bill McKibben, an humble college professor, is now challenging the country with this math. We can emit something like 500 plus tons of gigatons of CO2 before we hit the level at which the scientists say we are risking the possibility of life surviving on the planet. And yet the fossil fuel industries have 2,700 tons, five times the amount of fossil energy in reserves. Their business model is to dig it up and burn it, thereby roasting the earth. That's a daunting challenge. How are we gonna deal with that one? <coughs> Bill is saying, unless we stop them, and stopping them means all of us rising up. He's invited us all to the White House on the 17th of February to make it clear to the administration that we do care about this issue and to divest of ownership in the fossil fuel companies. To say to them, your behavior, your business model, business as usual, is not acceptable. Mandela said poverty is not an accident. We made it. And because it's human made, we can change it. And when Mandela got out of jail, his first visit was to an American college to say thank you to the students for the campaign of divesting from ownership in South African companies. So is Billy McKibben right? Can we do it this way? I don't know, but it has worked in the past. And we are going to have to change the story of what business as usual is about. Is it acceptable to roast the earth? That story will be told by people now walking the earth. Because the World Bank, OECD, the Booster Growth Club of the Rich Nations, International Energy Agency, all now say, we've locked in two degrees C warming. Sorry, it's too late to do anything about that. If we do not act by 2017, we will lock in six degrees C warming. As Donna said, six degrees C is not survivable, not by life as we know it. And we're told that it is our failure as consumers, the zombie American consumer is ruining the economy. And governments are falling, protests are happening, Sarkozy lost his position, Merkel is now standing as the advocate of a story that what we have to do is this Calvinist, moralistic austerity. Is that the right story? I don't think so. Neither do the statistics. The countries that are most, that have the strongest austerity programs have the lowest GDP. This is not the way forward. So we are going to have to invent a new economic story. We now know Kaufman Foundation, the big companies are not the job creators, it's startups, it's entrepreneurs. In all but seven years since 1977, the big companies have been net job destroyers. We need to start telling the story of entrepreneurs. And we need to invent a new story. My old boss, Dave Brower, used to say, what do you want the earth to be like? 50 years from now. Let's do a little dreaming. Aim high, he said. Navigators have aimed at the stars for centuries. They haven't hit one yet, but because they aimed high, they found their way. What is our story? 
We know from books like Jared Diamond's Collapse that civilizations that ignore their resource base end up in cannibalism. Is that the story we want? I prefer Bucky Fuller. The best way to predict the future is to invent it. So Gifford told the story of Kevin Maas and the entrepreneuring that we're doing here at BGI. And Donna mentioned the Unreasonable Institute. G.B. Shaw famously declared that the reasonable man person adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to get the world to adapt to him, to her. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable. We have set out a mission to transform the world through entrepreneuring. And we have a, we have a team of young entrepreneurs. You heard one of them this afternoon. Or Scott Frank, who lived two years on the Tibetan Plateau with the people there, iterating a new solar cooker because they have no firewood. And now he is taking this to the world. Alejandro España, uh, Jackie Dietrich, uh, Alejandro's CEO here in the US, is here today. We are trying to transform Mexican agriculture using organic production. And you heard from Donna. How does the Unreasonable Institute work? There are about 60 of us who mentor these young entrepreneurs who come together. People like Dr. Bernard Amade, Jigger Shaw, founder of Sun Edison, uh, Tom Chi, who uh, worked with Google's uh, X project, and the odd Colorado cowgirl. Here are our principles. Treat everyone you meet as if they are the Messiah. That's what we do at BGI. I hadn't realized it until Daniel Epstein said it. That's why the BGI spirit is. Because when you walk in, they're so glad to see you. What a difference it makes in creating a community. Tell the truth. Be agile. Do what works. Gashido. Get shit done. Dance. Celebrate. And lean into fear. Anyone who's been an entrepreneur knows that. You hear this phrase, yeah? Don't take a risk. The second mouse gets the cheese. Come on, guys. Let's be like this little feller. <laughs> let's slap on a helmet and go for it. So I did two weeks ago. Daniel, Daniel Epstein, one of the founders of Unreasonable, called me up and said, we're going to do Unreasonable at sea. We're going on a semester at sea boat. Come along. Like, sea? <laughs> I'm a land mammal. But I reflected years on, I have driven the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and watched those big boats putting out to sea and wondered, what would it be like to leave land, to sail west, and so I undertook this challenge of unreasonable at sea. How do we take on the world's greatest challenges with entrepreneurs? Some, uh, Scott Frank, some of the entrepreneurs who've been at the mansion and others who haven't, one belief that entrepreneurship will change the world. So we, we boarded a big boat in Ensenada, 600 students. I hadn't quite realized we were, we were going to have all these undergrads, too. But that's, that's cool. And we set sail. And this is me toasting, leaving land. And then turning to these seas and to the 20-foot swells. It's interesting when you have windows like this and you're lecturing and the window goes all the way into the water and then all the way into the land and it does that for five days on end. And talking. This is Daniel and George Kimball who uh, founded the Stanford Design School. They're teaching a design of entrepreneuring class on board. Speaking to the entire boat of people about why we were on the boat. What does it mean to have entrepreneurs in the mix of semester at sea? Entrepreneurs, people like these two guys, they are using, they're using carbon exhaust to make carbon nanotubes. 
Carbon fiber is real expensive, and it, it's real useful. You embed it in steel and plastic and all manner of things, but it's expensive, so we don't. But what if you can use waste, waste products, to make cheap carbon nanotubes? They're, they're an Indian company. Or Prakti stoves, or this team, which is using computer gaming to teach teachers how to make teaching fun. And I want to involve them in the work that I'm doing, trying to take sustainability education to scale. Because think about it. In nature, carbon is not the world's greatest problem. It's the building block of all of life. So how do we entrepreneur the solutions to things like climate change? Companies like Calera that are misting seawater through the flue gas of natural gas plants so that they can make a material like cement. When you make cement the old-fashioned way, you emit a lot of carbon. They're doing this in a way that sequesters carbon, that takes carbon out of the, the, the CO2 in the waste and then turns it into cement. This is what gives me hope. When all the numbers are against us all the time, 2017, it's not a lot of time. Go hang out with entrepreneurs and you realize that we can solve these problems. As Mandela said, we made these problems. We can darn well solve them. Plastic bottles, the trash in the oceans. So the company method is now taking that ocean trash and turning it into their plastic bottles. We ought to be, each one of us, we ought to be seeking out the companies that are telling a different story about what's possible in the future. And I want to celebrate my favorite entrepreneurs. What courage, what leaning into fear to take their entire personal resource and create this. BGI exists because of these two. And Gifford says, I believe in fun and playfulness for, it, for their own sake and because they're needed for creativity. People will only give up the status quo when they imagine themselves as happier. So I go tomorrow to Bhutan. I climb on an airplane at noon tomorrow, fly for 24 hours to work with a team of international experts at the invitation of the Prime Minister and the King to transform the global economic paradigm away from gross national product to gross national happiness. <laughs> Dr. Robert Costanza, father of ecological economics, is heading this up. David Corton, who is a frequent lecturer here at BGI. Vandana Shiva, uh, one of the, the great leaders against conventional globalization out of India. Because we know what we do now isn't working. It isn't making us happier. GDP is going up. Happiness is staying the same. And isn't the story that you want to tell how happy you are? So what is our story of happiness? General Petraeus said there are four tasks to, of a strategic leader. Get the big idea right. That's what entrepreneurs do. Communicate that idea, and you're in for a treat. Udayan Jatar, one of our professors, is going to talk to you about communicating and how do you get the big idea right. And then implement that idea, and then systems thinking. Capture the best practices and return it so that you refine that idea. These are our opportunities. We hear stories all the time of great leaders, and they're inspiring stories. But remember, in the story Lord of the Rings, it was the little people, the hobbits, who took on their shoulders this awesome task. And they were scared. They didn't know where they were going. But in the end, all the kings and warriors and wizards could only stand by as the little people saved the world. I think real 
leadership is extraordinary courage by ordinary people. Maimonides said, each of us must see ourselves as though the entire world were held in balance and any deed that we do might tip the scales. What is your story? And let's build a story together that's going to solve these problems. Thank you. <laughs>